Welcome to another video by Warp9 Tech Design. In this one, we will show you how to set up the TMC 3-in-1 in Mach 4. Start by going to our website, warp9td.com. Go to FAQ, Mach 4. Scroll down to Torch Height Control, and you can read a little bit about Torch Height Control right here and then go down to the TMC 3-in-1 Torch Height Controller. In here we talk about height control and how to set it up. The first thing you will need to do is download our ESS Mach 4 plugin and then also the TMC 3-in-1 Mach 4 plugin. Both of those will go into your C drive, Mach 4 Hobby, Plugins, and here you can see the two ESS files and the two TMC 3-in-1 files that you will need. If you download our sample profile, you can import it. When you import it, it will go into your profiles directory. In this case, it was imported with the profile name A TMC 3-in-1. In there, you'll have some macros, and the important macro is m2020.mcs, which, if you download, is right here. Make sure it goes into your profile name, macros. The final thing you'll need is the TMC 3-in-1 screen set, and that will go into this screens folder right here. Here are three sample G-code files, which I will go through in the next videos, but they show you how to run everything. In here are the setup instructions, and instead of trying to go through the web page, I'll just take you through the actual plugin itself, but there's more details if you scroll through down here and follow along. Configure, Plugins, TMC 3-in-1. Here's some general information on this page right here, including important ports and pins. On general, pierce count limits, which means after 250 pierces, you'll throw on a warning LED so that you know you should look at your consumables. You can log data files or not. You don't need to do that usually. Plug-in frequency of 9 works great. Uh, set your tip voltage divider ratio depending on what your plasma unit provides. 50 to 1 is a very common setting. If you're using hypertherm, you will need to set it to negative tip volts. Thermaldyne and most other ones are positive tip volts. Make sure you check your manual. Target band voltage is the area around the tip volts that we will not do any up or down moves in. If you have your above target voltage at 15, that means 15 volts above your target tip volts from 15 volts and anything higher, your z-axis correction response will be at 100% of your z-axis speed. If you are inside the 15 volt band, so let's say your target tip voltage is 100 volts and you're at 110, that'd only be 10 volts above so you'd only have two-thirds the speed of your z-axis. If you're at five volts, you only have one-third the speed of your z-axis. So if you're far away, it moves fast. As you get closer to your target tip volts, it slows down. Same thing for the below target voltage. THC offset voltage is rarely used, but it's an option. Anti-dive mode one is delay after arc OK. In this case, if it were enabled, it would wait for 1.6 seconds after the arc OK came on before it would allow torch light control. This mode right here is so that you can use your G-code to turn torch light control on and off. You turn it on with an M62, P, whatever number command, in this case like P21, and it will allow torch light control. You turn it off with the M63 P21 command, torch height control will not move your Z axis up and down. 
Where this comes in handy is at the start of a G-code file, you turn it on with M62, you cut some straight lines where you want torch high control to move the Z-axis up and down. When you get to some small circles that it would normally dive in and cause all sorts of trouble, you call M63 to turn off torch height control. You cut all the little tiny circles. Then when you're done with those, call M62 again, and it will allow you to do torch height control on some more straight lines or larger circles. Anti-dive mode three is velocity based. And what that means is when you're first starting to move, torch height control will be disabled so that you don't dive at the beginning of a cut. Once you get up to speed, whatever your commanded feed rate is, it will allow torch height control. As you get towards a corner and you need to slow down, it will disable torch height control so that you don't dive in the corners. Voltage-based anti-dive is another option. And where this really helps a lot is if you are crossing pre-cut lines and that will keep it from diving on the pre-cut line. And make sure to press OK to save your changes if you want to save them. I don't want to, so I'm pressing cancel. The important tab here is height control. In here, if you're using the TMC 3-in-1, you need to use hardware controller, which is the serial version. You have Z-axis max height limits for height control, and you can set it whatever you want in a minimum height limit. If you are going to use these, you will probably want to do it in work coordinate mode, just so that you are based off of what you see on your DRO. Machine coordinate doesn't really work the best but it's an option. Another option that is fairly popular is to just ignore limits altogether, and it will not prevent torch height control. It will not prevent the ZX moving up and down based on whatever position your DRO says. If you're using a torch, you're going to want to enable this to use a torch and assign it to some output number, zero to 63. Pick an unused one. We'll just go with 60 or number three. You can put in a pierce delay time after arc OK, and what this will do is it will inhibit all G-code movement for however many seconds you specify. In this case, five milliseconds. You could put it to 1000, and it would basically be for a full second, it's just going to sit there and burn before it allows any G-code movement of your Z, X, or Y axes. If you're going to be using anti-dive mode 3, you need to check this and assign port 3 pin 16 to your laser PWM XY velocity PWM. Down here is a required dummy signal for the gate. So this is the laser gate dummy signal. Set it to some output number, doesn't really matter. In this case, we'll come up and set it to number five. Over on the pin configs, you can set up your motors, your home switches, your probe, your e-stop, however you need to. And here, we're going to assign our dummy laser gate signal to output number five to port two pin 17 because it's an unused output signal for me, or output pin. You can use any unused output pin you want. Doesn't matter. Down here, we have TMC 3-in-1 arc OK, assigned port 3, pin 10, that's a must. Port 3, pin 14, must be AD mode 2, activate TMC 3-in-1 output. Number 4, activate TMC 3-in-1 output number 4. Port 3, pin 16, must be AD mode 3, XY velocity PWM. Port 3 pin 17 must be your torch relay, in my case assigned output number 3. For input signals, e-stop, home switches, limit switches, whatever you need, probe, whatever pin, but for your THC on, arc OK, enable it, port 3 pin 10. For your output signals, your motors, whatever you need, come down here to laser PWM, enable it, 
port 3, pin 16. Scroll down to your outputs. Again, it can be any of the outputs as long as you set them in the height control tab to whatever number. In my case, output number 3 is my torch, port 3, pin 17. Output number 4 is AD mode 2, port 3, pin 14. And output number 5 is my dummy laser gate signal that we won't be using, but it needs to be there for it to work. That is everything you need to do to set up the TMC 3-in-1 in Mach 4. Thank you for watching.